Hello everybody, so today we're going to be doing a bit of editing, uh, touching base on the very on the basics of um, getting an image ready for uh, Jet Photo. So let's do it. I'm going to be using this Delta image I took back on December. Um, very sunny afternoon, so we're, gonna, we're not going to be dealing with contrast issues in this one. We'll just be covering the basics. I'm going to be using Lightroom Classic. This is the latest version and then later I'll jump into Photoshop for some quick tips. Alright, so let's start by going down to the lens correction section. Um, just click on both options. The most important one is the profile our lens profile section it this is important because it loads the right profile for your lens and it gets rid of most of the distortion generated by the physics of that lens including um, any exaggerated proportion or um, vignetting etc and at the end this helps to get a more natural looking image and that's exactly what we want all right, let's continue by using the crop tool to center the image. So this is very important because if you don't do this right, you will get a lot of rejections because you are leaving too much space on the size here. So let's start with the horizontal plane. Uh, what you want is use the grid uh, to get the image, sorry, the aircraft center. So the tip of both sides is at the same distance to the border that you're leaving by cropping it, right? So this is roughly this is roughly okay. Now it is the same with the vertical plane. Let me just go down a bit because this is too high. You want the same distance here than here. So I'll keep checking or fine tuning with the um, grid. Uh, and this is what for me works the best. Now, okay, good. This is for me crop good enough. Now the next step is to set the horizon. This is very important because you will get a lot of rejections by not setting the horizon right. And a lot of people, I think, use the horizontal references and instead they should be using or we should be using the vertical references because they never change. With horizontal references, they change depending on the angle to the aircraft. Uh, and if you go to the forums of Jet Photos, you will read a lot of discussions regarding this. So the best advice is to use uh, the vertical references. So let me give you an example. I will zoom in now to this uh, building. And you see the red border here. I compare it with the border of the tool here. So what I do is see if the red is equally um, to the border, and if not, I just correct. In this case, I think it should be a, it should it needs a little a correction or rotation, so it you know it aligns. You should be getting those vertical references. Let me look for another one real quick here. Um, best thing is to use buildings. Try not to use antennas. They sometimes they are not that straight. But if you use um, buildings and vertical references, you should be you should be just fine. Maybe you don't see the detail, but I see this as being straight because um, or look at the left the red line of the building i think it requires it needs a bit more so a bit of rotation and i think we're safe here all right so with this we have uh, an image that is cropped and is uh, the horizon is set straight and that's uh, that's great because this is uh, the basis for uh, for us to start um, editing the rest all right so next stop is color, contrast, exposure, etc. This is a lot of fun. So my best advice is go for the auto option. It should help you uh, avoid, uh, you know, clipping highlights and uh, bringing out the most of your shadows in a natural way because a lot of people go crazy with shadows and a lot of contrast. And I mean, guys, this is not 
this is not what we want. We want a, an image that looks naturally, has a nice contrast, so it pops. So uh, using the auto um, option here is a very good beginning. What I usually do is um, I use the auto, I uh, leave everything uh, as is, uh, except if I not if if I think Lightroom is exaggerating the the saturation. But apart from that, I leave everything as it is, and then I work my way with uh, with contrast. So what I do is I, I look for the sweet spot in what my eyes are telling me the sweet spot is. So I usually leave it like there. All right. Next thing is uh, white balance. Um, you could, if you're shooting raw, um, you can do a safe bet and just use like daylight or the profile that better suits your shooting scene. Sometimes you need to tweak it a bit so it doesn't look too yellowish or too bluish, etc. In this case, I like what I see, so but I'll just adjust and add a bit of warm here. Good. Let me scroll down next to sharpening and noise reduction. So this is, these are the default settings. Here, what you need to do is apply a bit of noise reduction depending on your ISO, your camera, your sensor size, etc. I mean, a, a lot of possibilities here. But what you want is, you see this? noise here for example in the dark areas you want to get rid of it but apply enough not to look like like this like a porcelain doll <laughs> you want to apply enough so it looks natural the image is not too um, it doesn't lose a lot of uh, sharpness okay so I'm I'm happy here same with sharpening. This will depend on your lens, your camera, actually the shooting or the, the, the quality of the shooting. Um, because if you fail to um, apply the right uh, setting or the right speed, uh, you, will be, you will be getting blurry images, out of focus images, etc. So don't go crazy on the sharpening because you will get a lot of rejections for over sharpening. You, you, one natural looking image and of course i'm zoom in here like a lot like 200 but uh, just trust your eye whatever looks natural will be fine i never go above 70 uh, depending on the camera this is the d500 uh, it usually go i usually go around 50 40 something so i'll just leave it here and i think it looks enough you can see enough detail and if i just let me zoom out if i go to the one-on-one -on -one, um, zoom here i think the image has enough detail and it looks natural i hope this translates well in youtube um, but if not, just trust your eye, go to Jet Photos, look at some images and see the degree of uh, sharpening and noise reduction that other people are applying. But just try to look at, uh, you know, to render an image that is natural. This is what's most important for me anyway. All right, so next stop is to check for dust uh, or um, in your sensor that you, they will usually appear on the sky. So for that, we use the um, this tool, the spot removal tool in in Lightroom, and you should see something like. Let me just go up here. You should clean up everything that resembles a dust spot. So with practice, this comes with practice. You will when if the it depends on how dirty your sensor is. If it is very dirty, you will get a lot of spots here, especially in, on the borders. Um, so I usually keep my, keep my sensor very clean, um, so I don't get many by, but you still need to look for those spots so you can remove it with the, with the tool. So let me just check if there's something I need to be removing here real quick. I think this one is... Oh, okay. I think we're okay now. And 
you see in this image on the back there's another aircraft here I'll just leave that it, it is what it is so it's part of the scene it's not a dust spot all right guys so now we have an image that is centered the horizon is leveled we clean a bit of the sky so we get rid of those dust spots and uh, let me stress here you need to read the guidelines the upload guidelines I will leave a link to the latest version in the description so you get so you need to, so you go through those uh, and get familiar with what they're asking and what they're not asking of course um, very important do not digitally modify your image do not remove things because if they suspect that there's some cloning going on some stuff that shouldn't be erased for example or added you will be um, I mean there are consequences if they find out so my advice is don't do it okay so with this image we pretty much are done with the editing we have the basics covered well what I want to do now is to give you some advice my the best advice I can give is practice 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 um, edit as many pictures as possible that's how you understand how your camera works how your camera and lens combination works how they render the light so it becomes easier over time this is very very important and it is important because uh, once you start editing more challenging scenes and pictures uh, you will know exactly what to do to handle those shadows up to what point you will be able to push it how uh, highlights behave how your um, whites behave etc so it's 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 a process so practice as much as you can you will even see a difference between some lenses in your camera for example i use uh, two cameras and i can use them on the same day uh, shooting on the same or shooting the same aircraft with you know seconds of difference and they will render both very different images and now uh, but i know now with practice how i edit them how to edit them best um, because I know how they behave, how they are rendering those, uh, you know, that delight, the, those images. So now in Photoshop, what I wanted to touch base on is, uh, is show you guys how you can use the adjust uh, tool, the adjustment tool equalize um, here to be able to catch additional dust spots, if any. So this is very important. So um, you can go Command-C or Control-C, apply it and zoom in, check for additional spots. They will show here. If any appear, you need to use the spot uh, healing brush tool here. It'll, it'll help you a lot to get rid of the, any additional dust spots if you go and you upload your image and you find a, um, dust spots using the check for dust tool in the in jet photos for example uh, and you didn't see it here then you need to apply a second thing here so do the following duplicate the base uh, layer apply the equalize and then bring up the curves and exaggerate the curve for example here see this guy go step by step and those dust spots will appear on the sky and they will be visible this is kind of emulating the tool offered by jet photos for to check for those so um, just play around with it and you will be able to see them uh, eventually and then you just go and um, apply the correction to the base layer and it'll be fixed pretty much so yeah that's one quick tip uh, I wanted to show you guys all right so this is it I hope um, you enjoyed it I hope I help you in some way to get closer to what you want to achieve uh, uploading your photos um, 
thank you for watching i hope you subscribe to my channel and uh, leave some comments if you want i will try to be um, answering all those questions that you may produce so great thanks have a great day